one of the lecture videos covers something that you can't really do, <laughs> um, which is a multiple solid interference calculation demonstration with the Mathematica. And I've you know done it with the Mathematica here. And the reason I was using Mathematica back then was uh, we had a site license for Mathematica. So people could just use this industry standard software for free. And I thought it would be good to use that to demonstrate things. Um, but we don't have a Mathematica site license anymore. So what I thought would be useful to demonstrate is how to do this exact same calculation using a completely free software called SageMath. And I think the calculation that's needed is simple enough that I can use the online version of SageMath. So that's what I'm actually linking to here. So this is uh, something that uh, you can download and run uh, on your own computer. And I have actually one running here. This is probably what's uh, messing on my computer. Uh, I was playing with this to make sure that I can actually do the calculation that <laughs> I'm going to demonstrate now. But uh, let me just use this to demonstrate the calculation. So um, just so that um, you have something to attach the mathematical expressions that I'll be writing down, um, this is the setup that, um, that you are considering. So this is gonna be n slit interference. So let me first draw it as a double slit, but it could change um, over the course of this demonstration. Uh, separation distance D. And uh, with a double slit interference, uh, what you have is, okay, you have a screen here and the light that's uh, um, coming from here, when they arrive at this screen, you can describe the electric field, the optical electric field at the position as being sum of the electric field due to slit one and electric field due to slit two, E1 plus E2. And, um, and I'm just gonna use the complex representation because it makes a certain calculations, especially here, really simple. So these two, um, so um, the representation for E1, let's say it has um, electric field amplitude times, then it's gonna have an oscillating part and oscillating part can be expressed this way. Let's say I'm gonna set my phase to be equal to zero for E1, then this will be just I omega T. And the electric field due to slit two will be, um, will look like this, E to the I, omega t plus the uh, phase factor v. And this uh, phase factor will depend on, um, depend on geometry in this way. So if we are imagining light going out to some distance at angle theta, the, the, the phase shift that gets introduced that depends on this path length difference, which is gonna be um, d sine theta divided by the wavelength lambda of oh, times two pi. Wait, 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 sorry. Um, <laughs> I labeled it wrong. <laughs> this part here, this is a delta x and there's a phase shift, a phi, that can be attributed to the delta x and this whole thing is phi, okay? Okay, so if we, when you have a total electric field that way, you can relate the intensity to the total electric field as a total electric field squared. Now, this is the magical thing with the complex representation, which is that if what you're interested in is not, if you're not interested in the intensity as a function of time, but instead you are interested in intensity averaged over time, then the expression for this uh, becomes really simple. It just becomes the total electric field complex conjugate times the total electric field. This quantity is guaranteed to be real and that'll give us the average intensity. When you use the real function description, then this math mathematical operation here, it involves integral. And <laughs> so this is the magical part that gets simplified a lot when you use complex exponential representation. And I can do this calculation with a few lines of code here. So I won't explain every single line because that 
uh, something that I think you should look up and learn. <laughs> so uh, let me just do a few demonstrations here. Um, so I'm going to define some variables. Um, some of the symbols that I've written down here, like a D, um, theta, and um, lambda, but I'm going to call it lamb because lambda happens to be a special keyword in Python language and it's going to complain. So lamb instead of lambda. Um, oh, and T. So I, let me just, I'm just going to put this in uh, as I define things. They will just cancel out magically, but and I'll put it in to uh, show that if I put it, it doesn't matter. T omega. Okay, I think that's all the constants I need. And uh, as playing with this earlier, it worked really a lot better if I uh, set the domain to be real. Um, oops, not capitalized, domain to be real. Um, so I'm gonna be defining my variables that way. And I can do a quick uh, kind of calculation. So um, I, let me define phi um, so that I have some easy letter to refer to. Phi is equal to D times the sine theta over lambda um, oh, times two pi. Um, well, let me just check. So one of the, this on thing online um, thing is kind of clunky with is, um, it's not quite as interactive as uh, this version would be. Here, each time I type in something, it gives me a return and it's a lot easier to look at and work through. Online one, each time I want some kind of output, I have to evaluate. And when I do this again, it'll redo the whole thing. It's cumbersome, but it just, but you know, if you kind of weigh the pros and cons, uh, one pro is that you don't have to install it to try it out. So, okay, so that's my expression for fee. That looks right. That's the phase difference between the two slits that comes in as a result of this path length difference. So if I'm expressing my total electric field, it would look like, um, so I'm just gonna say my inad is equal to one. So I'm kind of doing this in arbitrary units. So my electric field due to first slit would be uh, exponential of I times omega times T plus um, uh, the electric field due to the second slit would be exponential of I times omega, oops, let me add the parenthesis times t plus uh, phi. I define the phi up here and it's gonna, program's gonna substitute the things in and all that. So, all right, and I can have an expression for the intensity. I average is equal to, <laughs> use this magical relationship. Um, so say a total, um, the complex conjugate, this is one of the, methods in the program language that uh, calculates the complex conjugate. Oh, maybe I should demonstrate that first. Um, so when I do this, this is what it shows. So complex conjugate is simply this expression here uh, with all the i's replaced by minus i. And um, I defined these to be real variables so that this expression looks simple. The program doesn't try to do conjugate of omega which is equal to omega when omega is real. So I average is gonna be complex conjugate times um, the E total. And when you just print this, uh, this is gonna look a little bit complicated because you know it's complicated algebra. Now, one of the nice thing about Sage Math is that it's a, a computer algebra system. It can do some of the symbolic algebra. So I can do something like um, simplify. So, you know, this calculation here returns a symbolic expression for which there's a method to simplify the expression. And that gets stored as I average. So when I do that, um, all right, this looks maybe a little bit simpler, but not that much simpler. Let me try this full simplify. There are more things that it'll do when I ask it to do full simplify. Then you get this real function, which um, I, I think that's going to actually plot the double slit interference pattern if I try to plot it. So let me do this. Um, yeah, I'm gonna leave that print there and I'm gonna plot 
I average, and I'm going to substitute in some parameters, uh, D and lambda. Let me just plug in some numbers. Um, so D uh, one and lambda. Um, so I want the wavelength to be shorter than the separation. If uh, uh, if my slit separation is like one micron and uh, wave wave wait um, you know if my slit separation is like a millimeter and my wavelength is around the one micron, which is you know within a factor of two of optical wavelength, then this would be one to 0 0.001. That would be kind of realistic ratios. And let me plot this from um, theta. So this is plot uh, as a function of theta. And looking at this, I think once the theta is plugged in, then everything will be numerical. Uh, I don't know, from minus one to one. Um, oh, that's not what I wanted. I think I need to plot a smaller range. So um, maybe 0 0.1 radian to 0 0.1 radian, or so, so from minus one, 0 0.1 radian to 0 0.1 radian. All right, oh, oh, I need to go smaller. Okay, 0 0.01. Oh, so from 10 minus 10 milliradian to 10 milliradian, small angle. All right, that's looking reasonable. Um, do I want to leave it there? I, I think I want a smaller portion. So let me go from minus 0 0.003 to 0 0.003. So 0 0.003 to 0 0.003. So, so yeah, that's a, a double solid interference. And um, let me, um, so with additional slits, this is basically the idea here. Um, so if I had a third slit, so there's an E3, then what I need to do is, um, let me color code this. If So I'm adding E3, then what I need to do is, um, an add, an expression for the third solid, electric field due to the third solid. And it's going to look quite familiar. It's going to, uh, this should have been E0. E0 times, it's gonna have same frequency, E to the i omega t, and this is a phase shift. You can kind of see from this geometry that the phase sh shift from one to two, and it's the same, um, going to be the same amount of shift from two to three. So the total amount of shift here, will be two phi. So, so let me add that um, to my total electric field. So I have E1, E2, and finally E3, EXP, I time exponential of uh, I omega T plus two times phi. Okay. Um, and the rest, I think, remains the same. So let me run this and see what I get. All right, that's not, that's beginning to not look, not so simplified. And, oh yeah, that looks like the plot with the three slits from the textbook. And um, and I have to tell you that this Y axis here is it's arbitrary unit. Um, if I want you to normalize this properly, I might have made sure my electric field is properly scaled so that this maximum this maximum is at one. Uh, I'm just leaving this as arbitrary unit for the sake of convenience. And uh, let me just to do one more slit now. It, when you are adding slits this way, at some point, so uh, what I'm doing right now would be four slit interference. And doing this manually this way, at some point it becomes very uh, tedious. <laughs> so what I would like to do is uh, uh, program it so that I can uh, add additional slits with a change of a uh, uh, few parameters. and. The program here has a uh, Sazy math has a function that will help me do that well, which is a function called the sum. And I want to sum it up is uh, particularly this way. Uh, so I'm going to express each of the terms here, which is gonna be uh, exponential of I omega T times exponential of I and parameter N times V. So, and this N will start from zero one, two, 
and for four solid, it'll go to three. And I think that zero-based accounting actually works well with how this program does it. So I'm gonna uh, build a kind of an array here. This um, for n in range uh, zero to, um, let me just to do, try to duplicate this one. So this be zero to four. It doesn't actually go to four, it stops at three because the way the language works. Uh, some, all right, that seems right. Let me do it here, see if it works. Okay. Uh, expression, I'm not even looking at it anymore. I probably should have stopped printing it out. Um, yeah, that looks right. So, so let me actually do stop printing that out. And let me just, uh, now I can just, just change a single parameter to do 10 solid uh, and solid interference. Oh, uh, I think it, this is gonna start taking a long time because of this uh, full simplify. Let me get rid of that after this one. Because um, that full simplify is a computationally expensive thing. And at some point, maybe even now, <laughs> the program will take a long time to do the simplification. And especially when we are um, in the end plotting a, uh, plotting a, uh, numerical function, this simplifying work doesn't make any sense. In fact, uh, let me reset this. I'm gonna copy it, refresh it. <laughs> I, I don't know how server deals with that, the uh, aborted attempt, but let me just not simplify it and run it again. T not in the list. What are you talking about? Um, oh, um, yeah, you might have something. So I think uh, this, when I didn't simplify it, it probably resulted in an expression that, um, that still had a T in it. So, um, let me do one more simplification. So when you go through the math here, you know that this uh, omega two will always cancel out. So I will recognize that and not even put it in because when you do the complex conjugate times the complex function itself, it's something that's always gonna cancel out. So gonna you know, just help the program <laughs> by not putting it in, in the first place. And <laughs> now it should work. <laughs> Uh, you saw that it canceled out with the smaller ends before, and there's no reason it would have suddenly. Uh, okay, it's getting. Uh, um, this kind of problem happens often, which is that I think because this was a complex function initially, when it is calculation, uh, it got um, the result ended up being kind of complex in some way. So let me show you. So I'm gonna just to take the real part only. So when I take the real part only, then um, then let's make sure I get something that's reasonable. Okay, yeah, so that's the tensile interference. And because I when I took real part only, I discarded the imaginary part. Let me just go back and look at the imaginary part. Uh, one number I do like you to take a note of is that the peak here is at 100. That kind of sets the scale for the whole plot. When you look at the imaginary part. So yeah, it's practically zero, but um, that's still enough to cause issues when you're trying to plot it. So I'm just gonna be plotting the real part. So what you saw there was, um, so 10 solid interference, 15 solid interference. Um, we'll take a little bit of time for it to actually work it out and display it. I hope it's not simple. Yeah, it's not simple. Yeah, so that's a 15 solid. So you can kind of begin to see how you get to the eventual diffraction grading pattern. This uh, principal maximum gets sharper and sharper. The numerous the secondary maxima in between gets smaller and smaller until they are practically zero. 
And uh, let me just do a couple more for show. Uh, I think I, when I was testing this out, I tried 100 and 100 worked. So let me just try with 100. So, you know, take a note of how this looks like. Let's see how 100 looks like. I hope it doesn't take that long. Um, that's why I took out the simplifying thing, but still 100 uh, algebraic symbols, it's a lot. Um, so there's probably more efficient ways way to do this, but for the purpose of this demonstration, it's uh, easier for me to just uh, wait here than to come up with a more efficient way to code this. Oh, wait, <laughs> finish the calculation before that. Did. Yeah, so that's with a 100. It might be that other people are overloading the server. Um, so th that's one of the reasons uh, to install it on your computer so that whether there are hojers like me on the system doesn't affect your own use. So that's with a 100. And actually, with a typical diffraction grading, it's common to have this MB1000. So even here already, this is becoming sharp enough that you can't really see it well on the plot. But uh, when you try lower values of N using uh, computational software like this, you can see how that width of diffraction grading gradually becomes something very sharp. So uh, let me let me leave it here. Um, I think this is enough for, for people who are interested to try it out on your own. And um, you can learn about SageMath yourself. It uses a combination of Python code and other open source software to do this. And um, if you want to install it on your own computer and play with it, um, it's a kind of way to learn a little bit about programming too. So yeah, Python, yeah, using Python. OK, so that's way over time. Um, I, Thank you for those of you still staying here. Uh, let me um, uh, end the session here. Um, uh, any questions before I erase all the screen and go to ending the session? Okay. <laughs>